Hello, hello, welcome to the video. When it comes to American sauropod dinosaurs, most probably think of Brachiosaurus, Parasaurus, Diplodocus, Brontosaurus, or perhaps Camarasaurus. However, there is one that is potentially larger than all of them and gets hardly any attention that being Alamosaurus. Discovered on a US geological survey in June 1921 by John B. Reeside, Alamosaurus for a while was known only from a shoulder bone, and a fairly large one at that, found at the Ojo Alamo Formation. Some also refer to the Ojo Alamo Formation as the Upper Kirtland Formation, but for now I'll stick with the former since that's what quite a few sources I've read go with. A paper describing the shoulder bone in 1922 by Charles Gilmore would be when the lizard would get its name, Alamosaurus sanjuanensis. The genus name is in reference to the formation it was found in, and not the Alamo fort or the bow that took place at said fort, unlike what most people tend to think. The specific name is in reference to the San Juan County in the US state of New Mexico, where the formation it was found in is located. In 1946, a much more complete individual discovered in 1937 or 1938 in the North Horn Formation of Utah would be described, made up of a hip, front leg, tail bones, and more, including a sacrum, which was reportedly not collected according to Don Glutt's book, Dinosaurs the Encyclopedia. The quarry the sacrum was found in would later be relocated in 1977 and in 1980 an attempt to recover the sacrum would be made, but by that time it had disintegrated according to the Equatorial Minnesota blog post about it. Gilmore in 1922 also mentioned a right ischium collected 200 feet away from the holotype, which might be part of the same individual, though this ischium would still be considered a separate specimen. Due to the material of the holotype being only a scalpula, the question of other Alamosaurus specimens would fall into question, with some even having listed it as a dubious animal. However, the Utah specimen described in 1946 was found to have a shoulder bone with the same features as the holotype, and since this 1946 shoulder bone came with many other bones from the same individual, this means we can use said 1946 specimen to better identify titanosaur bones as Alamosaurus or not. One of the many things that makes Alamosaurus interesting besides the size, which I'll get to in a second, is its osteoderms. According to the book Dinosaur Facts and Figures, the sauropods and other sauropodomorphs, Alamosaurus is currently the largest known sauropod with osteoderms, or at least known ones by the way. One osteoderm measured an incredible 24 centimeters in length. According to the same book, this is the largest osteoderm found in North America so far. Speaking of which, the main thing that has led to Alamosaurus gaining fame is due to it being so far the only Maastrichtian aged sauropod found in North America, often leading to it being hailed as the last sauropod. Obviously, there might be others yet to be discovered, but we'll have to wait and see. It was first thought sauropods died out in North America during the early Cretaceous, with the group only returning 35 to 40 million years later with Alamosaurus, but this asks the question of how did it return? The most thought of theory is that of Alamosaurus, or an ancestor of Alamosaurus, immigrating from South America, though there might be some problems with this theory. As Prehistoric Wildlife notes, no other fauna from South America is known, and no North American fauna is known in South America. Personally, I like to think it's because Alamosaurus just got refugee status while the pro-immigration political party was in power, but it might also be that Alamosaurus might have come from Asia via the Bering Strait. Prehistoric wildlife states Alamosaurus belongs to a subfamily of titanosaurs found in Asia, so this might be good evidence for such a claim. However, according to a post on theplosblog.plos.org, a 2016 study suggests Alamosaurus most likely has a South American origin, and that seems to be the most widely accepted one among experts. And a blog post from Equatorial Minnesota says that some studies have found Alamosaurus to not be closely related to Asian sauropod genera. It still doesn't explain why you don't get a belly sauros from South America and North America, or North American Tyrannosaurids in South America, but I think we should remember that an absence of evidence doesn't mean evidence of absence. An interesting part about discussion about Alamosaurus also considers how long the species lived. It's currently found in the Maastrichtian stage of the Cretaceous, which for those who don't know was the final stage of the Cretaceous. However, some have claimed it lived past that and into the Paleocene epoch in the San Juan Basin. The Paleocene epoch lasted from 56 to 66 million years ago. 
If it lived somewhere around 64.8 million years, like some suggest, give or take a few million years or so, this would have made Alamosaurus a fairly late surviving non-avian dinosaur. However, numerous scientists have cast a doubt and could probably be a topic for its own video. But for now, until I dive into this further, I don't have high hopes that Alamosaurus made it 1 or 2 million years past the KPG mass extinction. When the meteor hit, it caused a massive environmental collapse, and large animals like Alamosaurus tend to not do well when such things happen. Large animals don't adapt quickly to change in their environment, so really, when the KPG event happened, Alamosaurus and other large herbivores would have been the first to go. Kids these days. Well, that can't be good. One of the most amazing finds of Alamosaurus was by a woman named Dana Biasati, who at the time in 1997 was a University of Texas Dallas student. Nine articulated neck vertebrae were dug up four years after their discovery and were massive in size, with one of them weighing around 600 pounds or 272 kilograms. The discovery was so massive it had to be transported by helicopter. This find, designated BIBE45854, drastically increased the size Alamosaurus was thought to have reached. Original weight and length estimates placed it around 15 meters and 15 metric tons, making it fairly small by sauropod standards. With this new specimen found, estimates quickly skyrocketed, and Alamosaurus is now hyped up as America's contender for the title of world's biggest land animal. Though, does this really hold up? Well, the problem is that these animals, even though it is fun to speculate their size, is that they are extremely fragmentary. Fragmentary to the point that I remember the Budget Museum calling Argentinosaurus, with its grand total of 13 bones to its name, relatively complete in his video on which sauropod is the biggest. Alamosaurus is up there for one of the more complete titanosaurs out there, with numerous specimens known, and even though that helps making the estimation of its size easier and means that the estimates are more reliable, it's still not good enough since all its competitors are still very fragmented. On top of that, we don't know if the specimens of its competitors we do have are just extremely large outliers, average, or small for their species average, since most of these dinosaurs are lucky to have more than one or two specimens to their name, when across the species lifetime there probably was thousands if not millions of them. For now, even with more and more advancements in paleontology, the size debate will most likely remain pointless to the point I won't be surprised if I end up being 90 something years old by the time it's solved. So, ignoring the pissing comp for now, when it comes to estimates for Alamosaurus's size, most of the ones you'll probably be familiar with are ones like the estimate in sauropods and other sauropodomorphs of 38 metric tons. Others might point to ones like a post on the sauropod vertebrae picture of the week blog, where on their how big was Alamosaurus post, they listed a weight of 50 tons for a 79 foot long animal, which translates to a 45.4 metric ton, 24.1 meter long animal. Meanwhile, a list from dinoanimals.com placed Alamosaurus as the fifth largest at 62 metric tons, making it only three metric tons short of equaling Argentinosaurus in weight, who placed third on the list at 65 metric tons. However, we can go even bigger, because why not? According to a comment on a deviant art post I found, said commenter estimated Alamosaurus to weigh an absolutely ludicrous 94.3 metric tons. Whatever size Alamosaurus did reach, it seemed to reach that relatively quickly, since according to a post on the Equatorial Minnesota blog, a 2009 study estimated an average maximum growth rate of 1,090 kilograms a year for Alamosaurus specimens from Big Bend. And according to the same study, 90% of individuals reached adult size by the age of 45. Some also believe that, due to three juveniles being found together and adults being found alone, that juveniles and adults had different levels of sociability. 
According to Dougal Dixon's book, The Complete Book of Dinosaurs, a study also estimated that at any given time in Texas, there'd be about 350,000 individuals of the species, leveling out to about one for every two square kilometers. Some have brought up debate about the material from Big Bend in Texas, however, saying the material might represent a separate species or even genus, but time will tell. There's also been some talks about Alamosaurus in Mexico, with most pointing to a femur about 1.35 meters long, especially when using it to estimate the size of Alamosaurus. However, according to the Equatorial Minnesota blog, the original paper describes it as C.F. Alamosaurus San Juanensis. The C.F. bit basically means it's comparable to, but not the same species as Alamosaurus, C.F. being short for confer. Alamosaurus in some parts of its range is believed to have lived with Tyrannosaurus, and at one point Alamosaurus was even considered to appear in the game Saurian, which is centered around the Hill Creek formation. Sadly, Alamosaurus was scrapped from the game after the developers found out there's no evidence to support Alamosaurus's existence in Hell Creek. This also means me saying that Alamosaurus lived in Hell Creek in my Dinosaur King episodes 1 through 5 accuracy review is inaccurate. Three Alamosauruses also appear in an episode of the Magic School Bus called the Bussosaurus, where they are shown grazing on vegetation. And most recently, according to the Dinopedia fandom website, a dead one appears in Prehistoric Planet Season 2, which at the time of writing, I have yet to watch. Alongside that, one of the skeletons mounted in the main hall of the Visitor Center in Jurassic Park is actually an Alamosaurus skeleton, which I will admit looks a bit small for an Alamosaurus. Remember, this is a pre-BIBE 45854 Alamosaurus. Alamosaurus also appears in Dinosaur Train, and the Sauroposeidon model from the documentary Clash of the Dinosaurs is used as Alamosaurus in the documentary Last Day of the Dinosaurs, despite the two having completely different proportions to each other. Finally, Alamosaurus, according to a video I found on YouTube, appears in an episode of Phineas and Ferb, and is a part of a DLC for the game Jurassic World Evolution 2. Overall, Alamosaurus may not have the same media attention as other large sauropods like Argentinosaurus, Brachiosaurus, Diplodocus, and Apatosaurus, but still has gone some notable appearances. And that wraps it up for Alamosaurus, ladies and gentlemen. Similarly to when I covered Acrocanthosaurus, there wasn't a dedicated video to it yet, so this is another first for me. I wasn't expecting this video to be as long as it is at over 2,000 words, but I hope you enjoyed this video regardless, and I'll see you next time I upload, whether it be a Sabaton video or a dinosaur video. If you want to learn more about Alamosaurus, I recommend checking out the sources listed below. With this new specimen found, estimates quickly skyrocketed, and Allosaurus is now. Allosaurus?